Hi guys, Dan Christian here and today we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to tongue on the saxophone. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that are talking about how to tongue in a particular way. Now, if you haven't got the same anatomy as that person, that one way is not going to work. So if you stick around to the end of this video, you'll see a series of exercises that I've prepared that we're going to play along together. They're going to help you understand the way that your tongue works, the length of your tongue and how to improve your speed, your stamina and your sound with tonguing on this amazing instrument. Now, let's get started. On we go. So, like I said before, everybody's tongue is a different length. Did you know that the current world record for tongue length is 3.97 inches? That's massive, that's this guy here, Nick Stobel, and he's got a competitor called Adriana Lewis, and her tongue apparently spans four inches from, that's from the tip of the tongue to when your lips are closed, the top lip there. That is a massive tongue, and if I'm honest, slightly freaky. Wow. And it's not just the length of the tongue that's different, it's also the width of your tongue too. The world record for the width of tongue is 8.6 centimetres across. This is Byron Schlecker. Well, you know, my tongue length, interestingly enough, is 2.6 centimetres, so I'm not winning any Guinness Book of Records at all. My tongue's really short. If I was to do what's being suggested in some of the videos that I've been watching, and that is that we have our teeth here, and my tongue is gonna come down, and I'm gonna move it forward, and I'm gonna sit the tip of my tongue underneath my bottom teeth and then I'm going to use the top of my tongue like this to make the phonetic. Now that might work if you have a longer tongue but my tongue's really short so there's no way that I'm digging my tongue right down there and doing this because it'll just sound really uncomfortable. In fact I'll try. I'm going to get my tongue and I'm going to thick my, tongue, my tip of my tongue right at the bottom of my mouth and play. That feels really uncomfortable for me. So what I need to do, I need to be, if the reed's here, I need to be slightly back from that. So I can't be right down here. Instead, I'm going to bring my tongue a little bit back because what I'm after is a relaxed tongue. Your tongue is a muscle that sits in the bottom of your mouth. It's quite a big muscle as well. It's like, it's not that big, but it's really big. And it's also really long in the back of your mouth too. So there's a lot of muscle to work. We work it all the time when we chew and swallow, but we don't need to necessarily control it all the time. So when you're playing saxophone, you start to actually control that muscle. You try to make it faster. You try to put it into various shapes because the way the shapes are, they'll guide the air. So imagine that if my tongue's really relaxed, I've got this kind of channel of air, right? If I book my tongue up like that at the back, I've got a really small channel, which is gonna make that air fly through faster. So that's useful for things like high notes. So when we say to raise our eyebrows for high notes, for example, that's what we're trying to get, this tongue raising effect that's, and also in the throat as well, the soft palate raises too, but really we're getting this tongue raise effect that's causing this little bottleneck in the air so that the air moves through faster. That's what we're trying to achieve. So when I'm playing, what I want to do is get my tongue there. I want to relax my tongue. A relaxed muscle is a fast muscle. Think about your fingers. If I tighten, tense my fingers up as much as I can and then try and wiggle them, they're slow. If I'm relaxed, I've got a curved shape in them. They're relaxed just as if I was falling, letting my hand fall to the side. Boom, look at that, I'm so much faster now, right? A relaxed muscle is a fast muscle. That's what we're trying to do. So we develop the speed and then we relax and that gives us the, that gives us the control we need to be quick and agile and that's what our tongue wants to be when we start tonguing. When I'm trying to tongue then, I'm going to have my tongue relaxed and I'm going to be using pretty much maybe third of the way down roughly. Now that is a rough estimate. Notice I use the word roughly. That depends on the length of your tongue. You might be Nick Stobel. You might be the one who's gonna hold the next Guinness Book of Records for the world's longest tongue. In that case, you're gonna probably have to fold that sucker around three times before it gets in the right place. I'm not, I've got a short tongue and perhaps you have too. So we need to think about maybe coming back a little bit or being a bit further. Just get your tongue in a relaxed position and then find what works for you. Now, a straight line 
is the quickest way to anything. So if I want to tongue quickly, I want to get my tongue in a straight line. Again, if my tongue's a certain length, I'm going to have a real hard time getting this straight line going on because I don't want to be bucking my tongue up like this, like clarinetists do. Clarinetists sit their tongue at the top of the mouth. They kind of book their, they have their tongue come down and up like this because the clarinet is in a different angle. Now there's a player I want to alert you to here. David Sanborn. If you haven't heard David Sanborn play saxophonist, then go and check him out right now. In fact, I'll put some links in the description below. David Sanborn is an amazing sax player. He's awesome. He's one of the best sax players in the world, hands down. He had polio, and it's said that because he had polio, he plays in an unorthodox way. A way that if a teacher saw him play having not heard him, they'll be like, mm, surely he doesn't play very well. He plays kind of like this. But he sounds so good that many, many sax players over the years have tried to emulate him. So go and listen to David Sanborn. So let me know in the comments below if you're, when your tongue is relaxed, where the tip of your tongue is. Is it below on your gum at the bottom of your mouth? Is it kind of in your teeth line? Or is it just sat pretty much tip to tip with the reed? Let me know in the comments below. And then we can go a bit more into detail about your embouchure. When I'm approaching the reed then, what I'm wanting to do is firstly have a channel of air flowing all the time. That's so important. We're always blowing. The tongue has got nothing to do with the sound production. It doesn't make the reed vibrate. My airflow does. So I'm blowing, I put my tongue on the reed, and then I remove it. So I blow, I put my tongue on the reed to stop the air vibrating, the reed, then I remove my tongue, bam, I've got this sound. Watch. So I'm going to put my tongue against the reed, I'm going to blow, I'm going to let the pressure build up, and then I'm going to release my tongue. Do you see how I have this constant flow of air? The air is always going. That gives me consistency. Listen again. The thing about that is every note has the same presence. That makes me sound good. Consistency is what makes me sound really good to everyone else. If even the most novice of position who doesn't play, if you're playing inconsistently, they'll pick up on that straight away. I always want to be playing with consistency, the same level of air, the same volume. If I force my tongue into a position where I'm uncomfortable, that's when the problem happens. So if I put my tongue up, so let's try, I'm going to time a tongue now, I'm going to place it against the top of my, so the top of my gum, this is how a clarinet is to play. Now I'm starting to get all kinds of squeaks, inconsistencies, it's not sounding very good. So if you're the type of person who, when they, who avoids tonguing, a lot of people do this, they avoid tonguing because they think it sounds spitty or not very good. Well, that's probably because the tongue is in an unusual position that's feeding the reed in a poor way. We want to get the tongue relaxed, flat, wherever it needs to be, but generally the tip of the tongue is coming down and we're going to be going pretty much a third of the way in, roughly, could be here, could be here, depends where it is. If you've got a wide tongue, then you could go tip to tip. Some people have said, attention everybody, never go tip to tip. Well, if it works for you, it works for you. Try it out, see if it sounds better. If it feels more comfortable and you can tongue faster, the proof is in the pudding. If it works for you, it works. There's no right or wrong there. If it causes problems, it's not working, we need to fix it. What I'd like you to experiment with is different phonetics. So, try a da, a la, a ta, a pa. These kind of names, these kind of, these kind of phonetics will allow you to get a different sound out of your sax. Try them, see how they sound different. So if I do a da. So that's a da sound. If I did a ta, 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 ta. Do you see how that's much more percussive? The da was much kind of smoother. The ta was more percussive, more poppy. So maybe I want the ta sometimes, other times maybe I want the da. Let's try a la. Now that's a really smooth kind of tonguing, right? Almost, it's almost like doodle tonguing. So that's a la, 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 la. One thing that you'll find there with my tongue is that my tongue is almost doing this. It's just barely touching the reed and coming away. La, 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 la. You can get quite fast with that as well. Then I've got pa or fa. No, it's fa. I get a lot of air in between it, so it's quite a soft sound. 
So you get, this reed's quite soft, so you're getting a lot of sound there, but if you do this on a harder reed, you'll find that you're getting a lot of air first, and then the sound comes in. So you get breath, and then air, which can be quite nice for kind of smoky, jazzy sounding. Um, almost quite effective on hard with harder reeds, as I said before. Also quite effective on tenor sax as well, or you know, deeper saxes. Okay then, so on to the exercises. So these exercises are something that you can put in your daily practice. You can even do it with me in this video. Now, the thing about them is, choose a speed that works for you. If, you've only, if you're new to saxophone, you're gonna have to do this slowly. Do them nice and slowly. The tester is the fourth bar here. If you have a look below now, you can see these, this exercise. I'm gonna go to this last bar first. I'm gonna go to the semi-quavers. The rhythm is one E under, two E under, three E under, four E under. It's just straight semi-quavers. If you haven't checked out, just a very, very quick plug. If you haven't checked out my Rhythm Mastery book, and my Rhythm Mastery course, please check down in the description below because this is everything you need to know about rhythm. It's really gonna help you play and I absolutely promise you that. And if you haven't checked out my Rhythm Mastery course and my Rhythm ebook, then definitely check them out in the link below. It's everything you need to know to never get lost in music before and be able to identify rhythm straight away. If you have rhythm on your side, you'll be a much better player. Okay, so we're gonna go on to these semi-quavers here. I'm gonna set a speed that's comfortable. I want to know how fast I can comfortably tongue these semi-quavers and work it up from there. Set the metronome to crotchet 80. Here we go on this first exercise. Here are the semi-quavers, two, three. So what I'm going for here is a really clean articulation. This first exercise is all about just being nice and even with the tongue, getting the tongue moving nice and smoothly. So it's a good way just to warm up. I'm gonna use the phonetic da through this, da. So I'm gonna go da, get my tongue in a nice position, get a nice clean tongue every time. Here we go, exercise one, two, three, four. <laughs> nice clean tonguing every single time my tongue is going into the same place it's going to take quite a while for you to build up to that level of kind of consistency but it's a really good exercise to do just to get your tongue moving it's also a good one for the different rhythms too on to exercise two then this one is all about getting an aki aki chora on the first beat so you can choose any of the phonetics that we were doing before for exercise two so you can use la da fa whatever you like any of them i use i'm going to use da for this one but i'm trying to get my tongue moving as fast as possible for the repeat of the note da 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 you got an aki aki chora there which means played as fast as possible so the crotchet should always fall on the beat da da rest da da rest Okay, let's look at this one. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Exercise three is all about what I call the super staccato. It's pulling your tongue away and getting it back on the reed to stop the reed vibrating as fast as possible. Remember that throughout all these exercises, we're breathing out constantly. So as a demo, I'm gonna get the note sound and then get my tongue back on as short, as quickly as possible, giving me this super short note. <coughs> So my tongue's coming away in super slow motion, you'd hear this. My tongue's coming away. So literally, here's a reed vibrator. I've got the air flowing already, the air's flowing. Reed's vibrating, I'm on. Reed start vibrating. I move the tongue away, bring it back. As fast as I can. But um, but um, but um, like that. Super staccato, here we go. One, two. Exercise four is about the new toes and the accents. Just a couple of different forms of our articulation. So we've got a normal tongue note, which is as heavy as you make it. 
just a normal note, right? Not leaned on too heavily, not accented, not staccato, just a normal full length note. Then you have a leaned on note, which is the tenuto. <laughs> So my tongue is just coming out a little bit heavier. I'm blowing the air faster. My air's moving faster. My tongue is just a little bit more abrupt when it moves away. That gives me this stronger attack. And then we have the accent, which is much heavier. I can use a fatter part of my tongue. I can maybe move my tongue a little bit lower. That'll give me an accented sound. But I want a much fatter sound. <laughs> So I'm really going for that. I'm really pushing the air. I'm pushing the air through. I'm moving my tongue away. And I'm almost getting this explosion on each note. So that's the accent, really heavy and accented. What I'd like you to work on here is getting the clarity between a normal note, a tenuto, and the accent. So every time a different articulation comes across, it's really clear to the listener which is which. So hopefully you can hear that in the demonstration here. Okay, Gregory Sachs, here we go. One, two, three. The final exercise is one that you can vary. So you can take any scale that you like. Like all of these exercises have been on G, you can, I definitely recommend doing it on different notes. So not just D, do it across the range. Do some really low notes, some really high notes as well. So this last one, choose a scale or a pattern. You can even lift out a pat um, an articulation pattern from a piece you've been playing and have a go at implementing that pattern on a regular scale that you know. Applying something difficult to something that you know in terms of articulation or even rhythm is a really good way of solidifying a harder passage or a harder piece of music. Okay, in this one, what we're going to do is alternate between tongued notes and slurred passages. So underneath, you'll see a little T for when you're supposed to tongue and the line indicating that we should be blowing straight through those and making them smooth. A tongue note has a degree of separation, whereas a slur marking is tell you to connect them so we're playing them in one breath, making a really smooth sound. Okay, I'll be going on the five. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So the next step on this is to do all the exercises again in your daily practice a little bit faster. So if you were finding it at 80 was too easy, then you're gonna move that up to 85. You're gonna try the same exercises at 85. If that's not causing you any difficulty, then up by five again. Increase by five each time. Once you make a mistake or a regular mistake, so you make a mistake a couple of times and it's getting a little bit scrappy, take five BPM off of the marking. So we're gonna go up when we get it right, down slightly when we get it wrong. And we're just gonna keep repeating that until we add infinitum, as long as you want, really. Keep it going. It's a great thing to put into your practice. It takes all the five minutes at the beginning of your practice session to do this every day. And I promise you, your tongue will get so much stronger from it as well. So what did you think of this video? Was it a yay or a nay? Let me know, please give me a thumbs up and comment below. Let me know how your tonguing is going. Have you got problems with your tonguing? Has this video helped you as this uncovered or unraveled some mysteries that you had or quite answered some questions that you had? Please hit that notification bell and the subscribe button. To get these exercises at home and print the sheet off, just click the link below. It's a link to the Facebook group where I've uploaded this PDF where you can get the link and all the exercises. Come over to the Facebook group, say hi, and please leave a message below if you enjoyed this video and if you have any problems with tonguing too. Please smash that subscribe button and the notification bell and I shall see you in the next Satscast videos. See you then guys. Thank you very much for watching. Bye 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 bye.